Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about the, in my opinion, best way to start off your workshop. And that is by restoring axes. So we are gonna talk about what you should look for when buying an old axe and how to restore their edge, their finish and their handle. So without further ado, let's get right in. The first step is gonna be getting your hands on an old ex. You can look around your parents or your grandparents' house, maybe they have something for you, but if you don't have that option, then you want to look out for a flea market or garage sales in your local area. So Google will be your best friend in this case. When you are on site, you're likely to find boxes of rusty junk and within these boxes, a few exits here and there. But you have to be careful because not any old exit is created equal. You can't uh, tell apart a good, nicely forged X from a cheap Chinese hardware store X with very low quality when they are both heavily rusted and in a pile of garbage. So you have to look for certain clues. One of those clues will be uh, forging stamps or any number of markings on the actual X. If your X like this one uh, says China on it, then uh, maybe it's not gonna be the best one. But if, if it has some kind of stamp or in the best way uh, some branding on it, then it will be very easy for you to see that it's probably a very high quality X. Usually lower quality Xs won't have any branding. And if it says the actual brand name, then you can Google it and find out if they are good, well-made X's or not. Uh, for me, I'm finding a lot of Stuber X's here in Central Europe. They are in like Austria, Germany, Switzerland. Uh, they are sold quite a lot, but again, this will vary a lot from region to region. If you can't find any stamps, at least look at the shape of the blade. A properly made X doesn't look like a door wedge. It should taper quite heavily after the eye and then come down to a very fine edge. Uh, cheap hardware store Xs usually aren't made like that. They are usually very fat, just uh, cast steel and get it out the door for as cheap as possible. So they won't chop nicely, unless it's a splitting X. Next, Look out for any weld marks. Often people use their axes more like hammers than axes and that leads to cracking around the eye, especially uh, here at the back. So people will try to fix it with welders, but it usually turns out very terrible because they don't really care about it. They just want to get the tool back uh, and going again. So unless you yourself want to get into welding and rehardening the blade, uh, I would look for a better option. It's you're gonna find one that's better than this. And you shouldn't really pay more than 10, 15 bucks for an X. It's really not worth it because you will have to put in a lot of work. And if it's too expensive, you might as well just buy a new one. When you have secured your specimen, it's time to remove the rust and to see yeah, what we are working with. And the easiest and cheapest way to do this is chemically with vinegar. You just buy the absolutely cheapest 5% vinegar that you can get your hands on, put it in a bucket, put your exit in and then leave it outside because it's gonna smell very bad for a few days up to let's say a week depending on how heavily it's rusted. And that is gonna leave you with a very nice, it's exactly like this one, with a gray, very coarse finish, which I actually really like. Uh, I, that's why I left the X like it is. But you can obviously go on from there and then polish it if you don't like it. That's actually also the second option is just polishing it for this, the easiest way is probably gonna be an angle grinder. Use finer flap discs, so 120 or 240 grit uh, sandpaper on the flap discs, and then finishing off with Scotch Brite flap discs. You can get usually get them in hardware stores. Otherwise, 
look online if you can find it. And these are excellent and you wouldn't imagine that they can give you such a nice shiny finish with an angle grinder. It's a very normally a very rough tool, but they work really well on pretty much any old tool, uh, steel tool that you want to restore. At last, you will need a handle, obviously. Again, there are several options from easy to more difficult. The easiest way is gonna be buying a finished handle from the hardware store. It's what I did here for this one. It's actually one of my first videos. And you just take the exit. I usually tape off the blade so that they yeah, won't like stress about in the hardware store. And then take it to the store and look at the handles that they have there and check if your eye matches any of the handles they have in there. With older axes especially, sometimes you will get very weird shapes and they will have a gigantic eye or just an eye in a very odd shape and this can cause some problems. You might have to check a few hardware stores because usually they carry different brands of replacement handles. Maybe one of them will fit you better than the other one. Look for a nice palm swell. This is this part right here that this tapers out and that is what actually gives you the grip. And for nice shoulders, this is, this is what keeps your exit from sliding down. If this doesn't taper out enough, usually that happens when they cheap out, they wanna use a little, as little wood as possible, then they will cheap out on this and it can happen that you can't fit your exit because at one point it will just slip down the handle like on a tomahawk. And that's obviously bad, so just make sure you have a nice handle. And also, uh, in a perfect world, the grain would run exactly from the blade to the back. That's when it can take the most amount of impact. So just look at all the handles that they have there and check if you get a nice matching grain. If you can't find it, at least look for one where the grain isn't twisted, where it's straight lines in any direction but not twisted, that can cause it to break very easily. Of course, making your own handle is also an option. However, it requires quite a lot of time and quite a lot of tools. First of all, you will need to get your hands on a board of either ash or hickory. Those are the two best kinds of woods for axe handles, which is already kind of difficult. If you got a very nice hardware store, you can buy it there. I needed to buy mine from like a wholesale dealer and they give you very bad prices because they want they usually sell like tons parts of wood and not just a single one so they give you a very bad price but this is actually one that I made previously from a board of ash then you will need to cut out whatever shape you want that is the biggest uh, upside from making your own handles if you got an odd shaped eye on your ex or you want a to replicate a particular handle shape that you saw on the internet and you liked, then you can do that. You can make anything fit with anything. You will need to cut out the shape and then you will need to shape the shoulders. That's the first thing usually. And for this, it's nice to get a draw knife. Uh, it works quite well. You can, if you train with it a little bit, you can remove tons of wood and it's much faster than a belt sander because with a belt sander, usually you will need to change out the belts quite a lot. And once you've finished the shoulder, you can start off with the rest. You can like round this over, however much you want. For this, again, use the draw knife, or you can also start using a belt sander for this. Uh, it makes rounding easier. A rasp and file combo is also an option. Usually all woodworking to tools work for this, but again, this it makes a lot of mess and it takes a long time. The only one thing that is left to do now is to give it a razor sharp edge. And for this, almost all the tools you found on this channel uh, will work, starting from like a file and a piece of sandpaper up to a large belt grinder. Also, there are a lot of in the middle tools like the lens key sets that I often use with the small sharpening stones or like some diamond stones you got. Um, they are also specially made egg stones like the Lansky Puck or pocket stones like the Falkneven DC4 that are 
very nice for this job, especially with the diamond side, make the first bit uh, getting the edge ground in a lot easier. So that was it for this video. I hope you liked it and you got some inspiration for your first project. Consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel and then I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.